So because you have to be authenticated to add a home into this system, before we get into the form to create a home and the GraphQL and all of that stuff, we should first get authentication working so that we can have an authenticated user that can do all of these things. And this video is basically going to accomplish three things. We're going to initialize Firebase, we're going to create our own authentication provider, and then we're gonna go and add that authentication provider to our app so that we can get um, find out whether the user is authenticated or not. So this will all start inside of auth, inside of init Firebase. So we're gonna create a small function that will do the job of initializing Firebase. So we're going to import these two files, Firebase from Firebase app, and this thing that we're not using anything from it, we just have to import it. And we're going to export a default function called init Firebase. And what it will do is just call firebase.initialize app. So firebase.initialize app. But we need to pass in something called a config. So let's go and create that. So const config is equal to, and these are basically just the different API keys and whatnot that we set up in an earlier video. So we have the API key, and this comes from process.env. This is how you access any environment variable in both Node and inside of the web with the Webpacker stuff. And we called this one next public Firebase API key. So a bit of a mouthful, but you could just go down to env.local and copy and paste it from here to make sure that your spelling's right. So the next one that we need is the auth domain. And this is process.env.next public Firebase auth domain. Make sure I spelled it all right. Okay. And then we have our project ID, which is project.env.next public Firebase project ID. Like that. So one thing we're going to do in addition to this is that because Next.js does hot reload and it's sort of constantly reinitializing the code, we want to put a little wrapper around this so that it only initializes Firebase if it's not already initialized. And the way you do that is you check to see if there's not already a Firebase, firebase.apps.length. And then we'll just move this code up in here so it will only be done if there's not already an app. Sorry, it's not apps, it's, it's apps, not app singular. So if there's not already an app here, go and initialize it. So the next thing that we want to do is go into this use auth file. So this is where we're going to be creating our own custom um, auth provider. And we need to do first is call that init, init Firebase function that we just set up. So I'm going to, why don't we just uncomment everything? There's going to be some errors, but by the end of this video, they should all be resolved get rid of that export because we're going to build our own things to export. And the first thing we're going to do is call that init Firebase. Okay, so Firebase is initialized. Now we're going to create a context. And context is something that goes hand in hand with provider. And a provider is code that you can sort of wrap around high up in your app around the rest of your components. And it's a way to share state from sort of the, the top of the app all the way anywhere to the bottom without having to pass props from component to component to component. So what we're going to do first is create context and we'll do that by saying auth context is equal to create context and to create context you can pass some initial values. So we're gonna say uh, user at the beginning is null. The logout function doesn't do anything, we'll eventually set it to something. And we'll say authenticated is false. So these are our initial values. And because we're doing TypeScript, we should create a type to represent uh, whatever's in our context. So we're gonna call this interface I auth context. And it has to declare the types of these three things. So the first one, um, it's either going to be firebase.user, which is a type that comes from Firebase itself that we're importing here, or the pipe, so union with null, because it can also be null when there's no authenticated user. 
the logout is going to be a function that um, doesn't return anything, so a void response. Sorry, it's not commas, it's semicolons. And then the last thing is the authenticated, which is always going to be a Boolean. So the way you pass the type information to the context is in this angly bracket here, so that you're passing um, the, whatever the generic type is that create context is expecting to receive. More about generics later. So for now, we're going to basically take a pause in this video and we're going to hop over and create these two functions in token cookies that we'll eventually use later on as we continue on in this file. So pause here, hop open to to hop over to token cookies. We're going to import this and then we're going to declare three little functions to access the token from Firebase that we're going to store in a cookie. So we're going to say export const get token cookie, which is going to be a function that returns cookies.get. So it's going to get the token from the cookie. We're going to create another one called set token cookie. And it is going to receive an argument of type string. And what it is going to do is call cookies.set. And we're going to set this with a name of token. The value for this is going to be token. And then we're also going to set when this cookie expires. So Firebase by default, I think they last for one hour. So we're going to say that it expires in one divided by 24. I guess it goes in like the number of days. So you divide it by 24, 24 hours in a day, and that gets you the one hour um, time period. So last one, we just want remove token cookie which when called will remove it from, will delete the cookie. So it's going to remove token. So with these three little functions set and exported, we can go back to use auth and you can see that these um, functions aren't giving an error anymore. So the next thing we need to do is basically start to create the auth provider. So an auth provider is a component that uses the context and context has its own provider. All very confusing, but hopefully will make sense as we start to write it out. So we're going to say export const auth provider. So the auth provider is going to be a component and this component is going to be of type function component. And the reason we're doing that is because Function components are already set up to receive a prop called children, and it's already typed um, correctly. So function component, yeah. So now we'll go into this and build the body of this. So the way that these provider components work is that you typically return um, something that wraps around children, children being sort of whatever um, components are that go inside of this auth provider. And what this is going to be is the auth context dot provider. So this context contains something called a provider. We are going to use this within our own component called auth provider. And what it's going to basically wrap around are the children. And it's gonna give us an error because provider by default requires a value prop. So we have to set this in here. And if you remember up here, we set some default values. So we're expected to pass it a user, a logout function, and whether it's authenticated or not. So that's our goal for basically the rest of this um, component. Let me just get some spacing so it looks a little bit better. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up user. This is going to live in state. So we'll say const user and set user is equal to use state, the hook, and the type of this state is going to be either firebase.user or null. It has to match the one that we told our context we would be passing. And we're gonna give it a default value of none. And we don't need it yet, but eventually we're going to use the router from Next.js. So we're just gonna set it up now in a variable. So we'll set it to const router is equal to the use router hook. And if you're ever not sure where these values are coming from, 
all of these imports that I'm using uh, exist up here at the top. So use router comes from the next router. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've said we're going to return user and we also need to return authenticated. So what we're just gonna do is basically convert this user value into a Boolean. So we're gonna say authenticated is equal to bang bang user. That will convert it into a Boolean. It's still not happy though because we haven't passed the logout function. So the logout function is one that we have to create. So why don't we declare it here? So const logout is equal to, it's an arrow function. And when called, it's going to use Firebase, access auth. It's gonna call the sign out function from here. And because it gives us a promise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say then, so when the promise resolves, we're gonna pass in an arrow function. And what are we gonna do when the user logs out? We wanna send them to the home page. So that's why I've got this router set up here. So we can say router, we're gonna push the user to the home page. And because it might throw an exception or an error, we're gonna catch it. And we're not really gonna do anything with it. We're just going to log it to the console. So console.error e. So save that. And now we can come in here and we can include logout in our return value. And that makes um, TypeScript happy because we're returning everything that we said we are going to include in our context. So there's just one last thing we need to do. Um, Firebase sometimes notifies us when the token is no longer valid. So we need to listen for that event to happen. And when it does, unset the user in our state and remove the cookie that we had set up. Or vice versa, if they've just notified us that the user is logged in, we need to set the user and set the correct token. So we're gonna do this here and we're going to do it in a use effect hook. And it's just gonna be run once on initialization. So inside of this hook, what we're gonna do is basically listen for this event that Firebase gives us called on ID token changed. And it gives us something back to cancel listening to this event. So cancel auth listener is equal to Firebase dot auth and then on ID token changed. And what this will do is call a function and it's going to pass to our function a user. And because we're going to do some, um, some asynchronous code in here, we're gonna say that it's an async function. So what do we wanna do? We wanna say if there's a user, that means the user has logged in and Firebase is telling us about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a token in a variable and we get that token from um, awaiting user.getID token. So it's a function that's available on this user, which is a Firebase user type. It's gonna return us a token. And then we're gonna do two things. We're gonna set the token cookie with this value. And we are going to set the user with the user that Firebase has given us. So else, what is this? This basically means that the user is logged out. So this is um, null, because it can be a Firebase user um, or null. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say remove token cookie, get rid of it, and then set the user to null. So that will sort of log the user out. Oops, I spelled that wrong, auth without an e. So in use effect, especially um, this one, it only runs once. When this component unmounts, you can return a function that gets called when this component unmounts. So we're gonna return an arrow function. So when the component unmounts, do this code. And what we're gonna do is call this cancel auth listener function because we no longer wanna listen for auth changes when the uh, this provider is unmounted. So that's how you set that up. The next thing we're going to do is export um, a custom hook that we're gonna create. So we're gonna call it export function use auth. And this is basically just gonna give access 
to the context um, that we created above up here. So that anywhere inside of the app, you can basically get access to the user or the logout function or whether they're authenticated or not. So the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna return use context, which is a hook from React itself that wants to receive a context. Okay, so with this setup, it's quite a bit of code. We've initialized Firebase. We've set up our context and its types. We've created a custom auth provider that provides the value to every component um, nested as a child. And we've created a little hook to get easy access to this context. Now we need to go and actually use this context. So we're going to go into the underscore app component. And I've already got the import set up. So we're gonna import that auth provider from the file we are just working in. And we can basically get rid of this fragment and instead put the auth provider around everything. So you remember that auth provider receives children. Well, the children it's receiving are these ones here. So the head and whatever page component that we're on. And now because the auth provider is wrapped around every single page of our application, what that means is every subcomponent of pages um, gets access to this context. So if you think about our home page, it uses the layout. So this home page is a child of our auth provider and the layout is a child of it. So in the layout, this means what I can do is actually get access to the um, auth context without having to pass props down all the way from the top. So we can um, uncomment this line here. And what we can do is we can say, it's equal to use auth hook that we're gonna call. And what does our use auth hook return? It returns our auth context and the value of that is user, logout, and authenticated. So what we can do here is these dummy stubbed out values, we can just pull from our context now. So we can get the logout function and the authenticated Boolean value, get rid of this. So now when we go back and look at the page, this, oops, I'm not running the app. Let's just let it boot up. So now when it checks to see whether I'm authenticated or not, it's now no longer that hard-coded value. It's actually checking from, um, from Firebase itself and Firebase is telling us whether the user is authenticated. So this is accurate now and it's up to us now to go build the auth page to allow the user to be authenticated. And then that will allow us to get into other things like letting the user add houses and et cetera, all of that good fun stuff. So that's it for this video. If you wanna take a look at what files have changed, we actually edited five files here. We used the auth provider in underscore app. We initialized Firebase. We created all of those token functions. We created our auth context provider. And then we, added that um, use auth hook into layout so that we would know whether the user is authenticated or not. So I'm gonna commit these values. So if you got lost at any step within this video, you can just go to the um, commit for this video and, and compare your code with the code I wrote so that we're all on the same page. All right, let's go to the next video.